On the tundra of the high Arctic region, the effects of climate change are already damaging the vulnerable ecosystem. Uh, well, see that. The Inuit are keen observers of any change in natural cycles of their environment. The continued melting of the permafrost has caused a decrease in wildlife on the tundra and changed traditional seasonal hunting patterns. These caribou are an essential source of food, but due to the loss of their natural grazing, many herds are now malnourished and diseased. For centuries, the customs of the Inuit way of life have been passed down from father to son. But for Tomo and his father Sam, the future looks bleak, as the winter and summer seasons are no longer predictable. Yeah, our summers are from uh, about three months long, and they're probably stretched to four months now. That's from June, mm -hmm. July, August, September, October. Yeah. Okay. With the different migration patterns and decline in wildlife, the Inuit hunters have had to adapt to survive. Like the rest of the world, they enjoy the benefits of modern technology. But hunting here is not for sport. It's an essential part of their livelihood. The loss of the Arctic Ocean's ice cover will have huge consequences for this unique landscape, animals and people. If the scientific predictions of the melting of the Arctic ice are correct, then the way of life for wilderness communities like Coral Harbor could soon disappear forever. Lonnie and Eric have come to visit the local school to talk about their expedition and its importance for future generations. It's already impacting our generation, but just think of our children's generation. Uh, it's not going to be the same world as, as, as it is now. Because over the last 40 years, we've lost 40% of the Arctic Ocean sea ice. And if there's no sea ice, that means pretty soon there'll be no polar bears, and that would be a shame. We're not taking a snow machine, we're not taking a dog team, but what we need to do, and just like what a lot of you do when you're traveling out in the land, is we have to go across ice, and then when we get to open water, we have to cross the open water too. So we need something that's part sled, one half sled, one half comatic, and one half, one half comatic, and one half, <laughs> 300 pounds we have to pull like this, and so we need a really special harness so that our bodies don't get worn out or get too sore so that we can go for this far. How, how long was that again? Across the Arctic Ocean. These are the boots that we're going to wear, or similar to these. Do these look like walking boots or not walking boots? Why? They're pretty big and they're heavy for walking too. But what we're gonna do is ski. And skiing allows us to be a little more efficient when we're traveling, and so we don't have to pick up our feet all the time. And the <laughs> boots snap right into the skis. Yep, and then we can also take them out too, for if, we're just, if we do just wanna walk. Yep. Or they just snap right back in there, like that. Pretty cool, huh? We're going to take some special kinds of food that look a lot like that. That's dinner right there. Doesn't it look yeah. good? Yeah. Mamakto. <laughs> mm. Very good. We want to try to help protect uh, not only the Arctic environment, but the environment to everybody on, our, on, on, the, on Earth. So that, we're trying to bring attention to those issues.
This looks like a flat spot right here. In crossing the Arctic, yeah, they will be risking their lives. To be successful, they need to average 21 kilometers each day over an uncharted landscape of water and pulverized brash ice. I don't know if it's do much. The melting and shifting ice flows beneath their feet will make camping highly dangerous. We can use a ski too if it's soft over there. Okay. Sometimes they will be forced to pitch their lightweight tent in freezing blizzards and gales. You want me to back up a little? How many is this one right here? And then they I'll want to reap in the end. With no prospect of help from the outside world, their only means of communication will be via a satellite-linked website so that will we chart their journey out, day by day. You want a line out to here. Alrighty. At night, they will be vulnerable to any movement of the ice flows, and they will have to endure extremely cold temperatures. And I'll go out in a little bit and get the. In 2004, Lonnie Dupre was awarded a prestigious Rolex Award for Enterprise in recognition and support for the expedition. My main goal is to get the word out about, uh, about global climate change more than, more than making the crossing of the Arctic Ocean. A lot of the ice of the Arctic Ocean you can see from satellites, but no one's really been on foot traveling across it like two ants in a plowed field. And so that's going to give us firsthand a view of how much water is actually in the Arctic Ocean. Each day we're going to put in our diary how much water and how much snow we've actually crossed. Lonnie and Eric will take daily samples of snow and ice, which can be analyzed later for signs of pollution and climate change. It's the mental part that's going to be the toughest part of the expedition. And so uh, Eric and I are working hard together to train hard together. So we um, know each other very, very well and are very efficient on the expedition. I might at some times take a few more chances than, than Lonnie does. And so in one sense, that's a good way to be able to strive ahead if you're in a difficult situation. It's also a negative trait too, though, which is I'm, what I'm aware of. And so in that sense, Lonnie can balance myself by being a little more cautious. You cannot start thinking about the finish line on day one, two, three, because you'll never get there mentally if you do that. You need to make each day your life. This is what we do, and that's what we're gonna be doing every single day until we finally get to the finish. It's deep here. I got it. When I go buy pack ice, ice that's been pressured up in various shapes. It's kind of like artwork, uh, God's own artwork on the surrounding sea ice. And every piece of ice that we go by looks something different. You might see uh, figures of bears or seals or, or various shapes in, in that sea ice. In 2005, Lonnie and Eric will set out on their epic journey to be the first expedition in history to complete a summer crossing of the Arctic Ocean. We call it One World Expedition because we are crossing via the North Pole where all the lines of longitude meet there at the North Pole and each one of those lines of longitude finger out like a spider to all the, all the countries on Earth. People need to realize that we're all on this globe together. We all need to pitch in to make uh, this world a better place for everybody. <laughs>